Hey guys, we put this video together. It's going to include setup, tips, and preventative maintenance to get you on your way, and also for you to get your best life out of your camper trailer. There's also going to be a bit of full drive action in there as well, so we hope you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. When you're setting your camper trailer up, it's very important to choose your ground wisely. You want to make sure it's level. You also want to make sure that the front of the trailer, that's the tow hitch side, is facing into the wind. If you're camping under trees, make sure there's no overhanging branches and also make sure you know which way the sun's coming from because you want to have the maximum amount of shade in your tent during the day. Okay, so I've picked my spot. The ground's nice and level. There's no overhanging branches and I've taken into consideration the sun and the wind. Next step we've got to take is we've got to stabilise the trailer. So by doing this, I'll pull the pins out on the stabilisers You'll hear them click back in the spot when they're in their right place. Just like that. Once they're in that position, we just want to take up the weight. Next thing I've got to do is I'm going to stand back and just make sure she's level. Here's a great tip. There's going to be times when you just cannot find level ground, but there are a few things we can do. Firstly, we can dig out underneath the tyres. That way you're going to get your balance right. And the other thing we can use is the stabilisers and the jockey wheel to get your tilt right. Those things combined, you're definitely going to get it level. When you're packing your tent away, it's important to leave some of the windows open. When you go to unpack it and pull the tent open, if you don't, it'll create a vacuum and it'll be hard to pull up. Another thing too is pegs. This is a sand peg, obviously great for sand, very stable. 
This peg here is very good for sand as well as soft dirt. We're in very hard ground at the moment, so we're going to use one of these little guys here, which will be perfect for the job. It's important that you bang all of the pegs in. It just helps for stability. And also when you're tapping your peg in, make sure it's on an angle. Bang it in like that, and that'll hold the peg in a lot more stable. This has taken me all of five minutes to get this far, and it's perfect for the overnight setup. It's very hassle free. Okay, we're just about ready to set our awning up. There's a couple of things I'd like to run through first. Firstly, the centre pole, down as far as it can go. It's a great height to work at. Secondly, you'll find three of these poles in your kit. They're the ones with the bent hooks. What we need to do is that each of these uprights, you'll find a little hole at the top. These simply get placed into the eyelet. And when we go to lift up the pole, when we're setting up the awning, you'll see the top. That'll just sit straight in there nice and neatly. All right, guys, I'm just about to set up the awning. I like to make sure all the poles are spread around where the awning's gonna go. I also like to make sure that the eyelets where you tighten up are facing down so it doesn't rub on your canvas. The other thing too, which is a great tip, is I've gonna bang the peg in the ground there to hold my center pole. This is gonna help us heaps. Okay, and that's the time that we need to put the ladder in. We're going to do a bit of work on the bed area at the moment. We need to adjust our side spaces and our vertical spaces, and we have to do this before we put in our wall and ceiling. For the wall and ceiling sides, basically what we do is you'll see a little cup in there. Put that in the cup. Clip that into the frame. Adjust your height and tighten and it's very much the same with the roof spacer. Straight up in the frame, making sure that your tightener isn't hitting the canvas. Straight in the frame with the cup, adjust and tighten. Righto guys, we're gonna start setting up the walls now. I do like to lay them out so I know which one's which. You can tell this, because the one with the uneven Velcro is the front wall. The one with the clear plastic strip is the kitchen wall, which means this one can only be for one other side. Now, there's a lot of different variations in which walls you use, but we always like to have the kitchen wall up for cooking. And most of the time we have the front wall up as well. And most of the time we leave this wall out because we like the view. So we're gonna give it a crack now and set them up. All right guys, we're gonna put the front wall up first. 
The best way to do this is I use the apex and just put it straight in the centre. And then I'll start feeding the side across. By doing your front wall first, you know that the side walls are going to come along and match up evenly. Okay, now we're going to do the kitchen wall. I like to start with the tent side first. Go through and run your top along. And once you get to here, we can start doing the sides up. Okay, at this stage here, it's a good idea just to peg your corners down and if you've got someone with you, or you're by yourself even, just go on the inside and just give these a bit of a press because it'll just make them a little bit more secure. Okay, so you would have noticed this spacer pole running across the door. For an overnight setup, we generally like to leave it in there, but if you're going to be there for more than a few days, what you do is you pull it out of the pin, you basically sit it in this pocket, Grab your Velcro tab, wrap it around like so, and then adjust the height. Okay, the final thing we need to do is make sure the base of our walls are all pegged down, not forgetting to put your pegs in on an angle, and after that we need to go around and attach all of our guy ropes. They should be attached on a 45 degree angle to each pole. Peg down with whichever peg's appropriate for the ground that you're using. And once again, in on an angle. Okay guys, a couple of last little important tips. When you buy your camper trailer and you get it home, I know you're going to be excited to get it open. Basically what you need to do is when you've set it up, make sure you soak it with water thoroughly because that will make the fibres in the canvas swell up and it'll totally waterproof your tent. And the other thing is as well, is if you've been camping and it's been raining, try not to pack your tent up with wet canvas because it'll mold. If you're gonna drive somewhere for half a day and get to another spot and open it up again and it's sunny, that's fine. But basically, I wouldn't leave it packed wet for too long at all. I think one day maximum is tops. couple of tips, if you're going to do some serious off-roading, it's very worth investing in a Treg Hitch. It'll give you 360 degree swivel either way. And also make sure your chains are crossed, because if this ever fails, which it won't, it'll sit nice and snug in your chain. Also, make sure your handbrake's off when you take off, and also make sure your jockey wheel's up. Safe travels, guys. Righto guys, we've come to a pretty rough part of the track here. It's really important, especially when you're towing a camper trailer, to use low range four wheel drive. And I'm going to hit this particular section in first gear. That way the vehicle's going to give you maximum traction and it's going to take you down all on its own accord very slowly. So uh, we'll give it a crack and see how we go.
One last useful tip is to simply grab a knocking strap, wrap it around your jockey wheel, hook it up. This way you're going to get a bit more ground clearance and also preserve the life of your jockey wheel. We just got back from our camping trip and I tell you I cannot wait to get back out there again. Now's the perfect opportunity to give your camper trailer a clean. Also, it's a good idea to go around and check all your wheel nuts, suspension nuts and screws and things like that just to make sure nothing's come loose. That way when it's time to leave again, ready to go. We really hope that this DVD has been helpful and also entertaining at the same time. We really can't wait to see you out on the road.